Welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to be finishing up the hybrid diamond painting pen using diamond painting drills and cutting up the blank I made with the pine cones. I'm using my Grizzly bandsaw set at just under one inch. For all you metric folk, I have no idea. And uh, I'm going to be cutting them, trimming them up. As you can see, blade drift from the bandsaw can sometimes cause you to end up with one blank that goes a little off. I'll have to use this one for probably an ink pen because it's a little thin on one end, a little thick on the other to make a diamond painting pen with. My bandsaw doesn't do a bad job cutting them up. I know a lot of uh, other casters use a table saw but my table saw right now is covered in junk. So I use my bandsaw. Over to the drill. Got my drill press all set up here with my vice jaws from about 10 seconds to about 30 seconds. Got my hand tool Here at the lathe, I have my drill chuck set up in my headstock using with a 732nd inch drill bit turned around, chucked into the drill chuck and mount it like so, so I get a nice perfectly centered hole every time. This is just a piece of scrap uh, acrylic so I don't hit the drill chuck with my tools, which if you can see, has happened quite a few times not good for the tools this is a cone shape center live center 
lock it down real nice and tight, make sure it doesn't spin. I run while I'm cutting at exceptionally high speed. My lathe here goes to 4,000 RPMs, and that's where I run at. I'm gonna be using a homemade tool that holds an Easy Tools round shape cutter, which I get from Amazon from a company called Ufo. Tool. and they work exceptionally well they're very sharp and they hold an edge much better than the Chinese imports from Ally or eBay now to the turning first thing always remember face protection We're going to turn this round to start off with. Little tip for starters, if you don't want to touch your work because you're afraid, you can lay your tool right above it. If it bounces, you got a flat spot. I usually stand back and take a look, see where, what design I want to do, if I want to thin it down, I can see some, I want to thin it down a little bit here to kind of turn through this bit of tear out, a little thinner to get rid of that thick layer of beads. Now I think I'm going to go with a pretty simple design on this with just going with a deep divot because I don't want to remove too much material. I want to showcase off what I have and the beads being suspended. So I'm going to use a detail cutter, again one of my homemade tools, and I'm going to go in a slight ways to make the divot. And I'm going to come back in with my round cutter and cove in the holes and make my shapes.
When cutting hybrids, you have to be aware of the difference the cut makes in the wood compared to the acrylic. The wood will cut a lot faster than the acrylic does. Starting to like the shape we got here. happy with the shape I got as you can see they got a little you get a little chatter in the middle which gives it a little bit of a wobbly cut that's from the material actually flexing back and forth we call that whip some acrylics do it a lot worse than others wood is pretty good unless you get real long thin pieces now I wet sand everything the whole way through the grids, starting at 150, and working my way through 240, 320, 400, 600, 800. And if the piece doesn't have a spot where I can see the the grit, I write it on there, and I do one thousand. thousand and three thousand wet in dry sandpaper now for the fun part sanding sanding is the part that no turner likes to do totally necessary but nobody likes to do it Some people don't like the wet sand when they do hybrids. Since these are stabilized, the water is not going to hurt the wood. And since it's already wet, the grain rises. You sand that rise, raised grain right off. With the first grit, you're just trying to get it smooth. You can see it leaves a lot of scratches. Just trying to get little imperfections like that off. Not a whole lot of pressure. Just working the sandpaper. We'll fill any deep divots, holes with super glue. beads from the diamond painting pens. I've tried the special beads. They're just too hard. They don't cut. They just chip right out. The standard beads seem to cut and be very close to the same material as the acrylic that I use. Rinse the sandpaper out, get the dust out of the sandpaper, and go back at it. Stopping every once in a while, just to check to make sure I don't have any big spots on this. I'll have to put some CA glue, super glue, put some of that when I get it all sanded up. Looking good. Three twenty, four hundred, one thing you got to pay attention to is your ends, 
seems to be where I always forget to sand and then I got to go back re-sand and polish extra on the tips. So I try to spend a little extra time on the tips. Now once you start getting 800 grit, it starts to take on a nice shine to it. Working out most of the scratches, polishing it up. At this point, since it's a hybrid, I'm going to dry it off real good. Blue shot down. Buff it up with the shop towel a little bit. grids starting with a thousand. I always sand on a slower speed. Paper makes better contact at a lower speed than it does a higher speed. So you actually sand faster. Once you get through these couple grits, you really start to see a shine. It starts to get clear. That's much better. I'm going to work a little bit more tiles in. Go down to 800 right here. up to a thousand. Two thousand. Three thousand. Now at this point, after it's all dried up, I could just go straight to buffing, but since it's a hybrid, I like it to have a little extra shine to the wood, so I'm going to put a couple coats of CA glue. CA glue is just super glue. Stick fast thin. I like to stick fast, some people don't. Thin is very thin, it's about the thickness of water. It dries very, very fast. You don't have to use accelerator on the thin. At least I don't. I do two coats, fresh piece of paper every coat and blue shop towel works the best a lot of the white paper towels paper towels with, with decals pictures decorative paper towels tend to uh, react with the super glue and they will begin to smoke and get really hot so blue shop towel from Scott's is the uh, my preferred a couple coats we're gonna hit it with some accelerator spray this instantly sets super glue doesn't matter what kind of super glue instantly dries it we're gonna take some medium right onto our paper towel and we're gonna work it back and forth a little bit hit it with the spray Fresh piece, one more little dollop, and I go from the other side this time. I use 
just to spray after every coat, just because I'm impatient. <laughs> After several coats of CA, we go back and a little bit more sanding. We might go a little bit more CA on this side just to fill in these little holes. Just build up a couple coats on that side of it. So we can sand it smooth. Switch up and use a coat or two. Well, this is thick from Bob Smith Industries. Same glue, just different brand. I don't use a lot of thicks. I don't buy big bottles. sand away. We'll start sanding with the 800 grit on it. Anything lower than that is a little too rough for super glue finish. We're just trying to take it and smooth out that finish so we can polish it. Getting the lines and any of the high spots that we left from the application. We do a thousand. And I'm going to use a product that I found works really well on hybrids and CA finish, especially because my buffer can burn through a CA finish. This one's a little gentler on the finishes and it takes about the same amount of time. It's called Dr. Kirk's Micro Magic. It's kind of like a paste wax of micro polishing beads. When you're polishing, you're just trying to remove your previous grits scratches. And you can see we're nice and clear. Got a nice finish going. I don't think there's any real dull spots. This will just buff it up to a little bit higher shine. I should buy blue shop towels by the case as much as I go through them. Micro Magic comes in three steps. Step one is in the red tub. We just apply a little bit to our blue paper towel. Rub a coat right on. And let it buff itself out. It works exceptionally well when you're using it on ones with a lot of coves, a lot of detail work. Some of my other shapes that are more detailed, I'll use it just to get in the little spots with the paper towel that it's hard to get in with sandpaper. And the buffer doesn't like to buff out. Now fresh beside, use number two in the white tub. Put 
And as you can see, it's really starting to get bright and shiny. And at this point, we're doing pretty well here. I'm going to flip to a clean side of my paper towel. This side just to buff off any of the extra. We're going to move on to the final step. Dr. Kirk's Magic Micro Piece number three. Fresh spot on the towel. Don't have to use much. And this polishes it up to a mirror shine or showroom shine. That's a pretty good shine. I think it looks pretty awesome. Come back for the next video where I turn the pine cone blank. Now for me, it's back to work. Thanks for watching.